I do believe that we are live. Uh, a little bit difficult to tell. I'm not used to doing things this way. Uh, even I learn new things with technology every single day. Uh, waiting for Matthew Dale from Educonomy to join us tonight. He's going to talk to us all about micro credentials and how you can use them and short courses as a way of diversifying your income. Uh, we've been talking about uh, different avenues for, for bringing in money um, during these difficult times because not everybody wants to be delivering full qualifications. Not everybody can. And so I thought that it would be really helpful if Matthew could join us and tell us a little bit about Edge economy and micro micro credentials and how they work. Matthew, are you with us? Matthew, Matthew, are you with us? Hello. I can't do this without you, Matthew, because I know nothing about micro credentials. In fact, I'm one of those people that says, isn't that the same sort of thing as just the skill sets and single units of competency? What's it, what's the big difference? Um, are you are you out there with us, Matthew? Can can you join us? Hello. Hello? I might have to, ah, here he is, here he is. Hello, Matthew. Yay! <laughs> we got there. I, I was feeling incredibly technologically challenged there for a moment. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I can't do this without you. <laughs> I was just saying, okay. actually, that I'm one of those people who really needs to listen to the, the ins and outs of what micro-credentials are because I'm one of those people who sits there and says, but isn't that the same thing as a skill set and a unit of competency? And I thought, Matthew, where are you? You need to come and tell us what are micro-credentials and who is Edgeconomy? Thank you. That's a Thank very, you. very, very good really? question. So... Uh, First of all, what are micro-credentials? There are a whole lot of definitions out there. I don't know that we would be able to narrow it down in one definition. Uh, there has been a proposed uh, definition put forward in the AQF review. Uh, it was put out about 18 months ago. Uh, that was the work of Professor Beverly Oliver. Uh, there's a few infographics that are up on uh, our social media threads, and I might pass one across to you that is, I'm happy for you to share. Oh, absolutely. Now, in terms of yeah, are you you're able to pass that one around? Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll put it in the comments or on the RTO Doctor Facebook page and everywhere where the the um, live video gets posted. Definitely. So Fantastic. tell us about it, and tell us about your baby. Um, it's not a baby anymore, but it, I think he had a birthday the other day—a baby llama. Yeah, yeah, we've got a, a whole lot of little uh, baby alpacas. Yeah, and uh, uh, we've alpacas. got a couple of the, yeah, a couple that are pregnant and due to uh, drop in the next couple of weeks as well. Yeah, and we've got a few little goats oh, as well. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Sorry, a slight detraction there from uh, micro micro credentials and short courses. Um, so, yeah. who is Edge Economy, and and why did you start that up, and and sort of. Can you tell us how micro credentials are different to skill sets, for example, and why for why sure. are provided? Because one of the things we've been talking about in the thirty days thirty tips uh, in this series in particular is uh, business has become very difficult for providers being in lockdowns with COVID. All the borders are closed and. And it's very difficult for them to, to do business. And one of the things that I've always, always spoken about is don't have all your eggs in one basket. And so we've been looking at different ways that they can really start to diversify their income. And I was thinking that maybe micro-credentials is one way. Yeah, absolutely. And you hit the nail on the head there with not putting all of your eggs into one basket. If I recall correctly, we probably first would have come into contact, Raylene, I think about 15 years ago, 
uh, in the Krykos space. Yeah, that's a long time when ago. We saw, <laughs> that's how long ago it would have been. Uh, yeah. Uh, down in Melbourne, and uh, even at that point in time, it was really evident that you had these uh, businesses, these training colleges that were turning over millions of dollars, but had all of their eggs in one basket. It was all in one particular course or two particular courses that were quite narrow. And if the worst thing ha were to happen, and of course that was what happened, that the students stopped coming, um, those businesses, how would they survive and how would they redeploy? At that point in time, there were a few different options on the table to be able to work with domestic markets and different types of training programs. If we fast forward to where we're at today, we really are in a bit of a similar situation where the carpet's been pulled out underneath the business models for lots of training providers that may have relied on a face-to-face -face model or particularly if you were delivering to international students. Uh, and again, we're at a bit of a crossroad where we're not sure when the borders will be opened up to the point that you can deliver uh, in the way that you were hoping to. Uh, but we're also at the point that businesses in education and training organisations do need to be deploying their training online in more rapid learning uh, type programs that uh, can be undertaken step by step, uh, a stacked approach or a scaffolded approach to learning. Uh, and learning that can be completed in bite-sized chunks or micro-credentials is really what we sort of get into at that point. Awesome. So really what you're suggesting is that these short courses and, and bite-sized chunks of learning, people can get some sort of certification for that and sort of scaffold and build up to whatever it is that they may want. They may not want a qualification or it may lead to several qualifications, but all of the chunks... Uh, or whatever the, the student or their employer or industry have determined is appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so there's bite-sized chunks of training. I mean, like they've been referred to as different things uh, along the way, perhaps sometimes clusters or subjects or, or skill sets. And in, in that same way, you may be able to complete two or three skill sets or, or two or three micro-credentials, uh, and that may form a module or a subject, or you may complete five or six micro-credentials that could form a whole qualification or degree. And so are micro-credentials always nationally recognised training, or can you do some micro-credentials that are sort of like non-accredited? Yeah, very good question. Uh, so uh, very much like offering short courses and uh, and, and yeah, short courses, whether they be accredited or non-accredited, uh, in, in the same way, the micro-credentials themselves can be accredited uh, with nationally recognised training, if it's a unit of competency or a, a qualification. Uh, now, uh, they can also be non-accredited, and we're seeing some amazing use cases come up with uh, member organisations or peak bodies where they're recognising a particular job role or a particular registration status. And I think there's some really good use cases uh, in that sense within the vet sector for recogni uh, recognition of trade and professional development, currency, et cetera. So is, are these the sorts of things that you're talking about that ITECA are doing at the moment? They're recognising uh, different levels of practitioners or is there something else that yeah, you, you're referring to there? Yeah, that, that is absolutely a, a really good use case. Um, yeah, and again, where you can align uh, particular job levels or, or membership levels or accreditation levels, uh, that, that's where it can tend to work really quite well. There's some really good examples, such as the Australian Computer Society, uh, also uh, Chatted Practicing Accountants have um, developed really good frameworks for um, recognizing the level that their membership are at, but also with the professional development that they offer, um, being offered in oh, a tiered right. or, or layered level. Programs. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, like a CPD model, yeah. Awesome. And, and do you deliver these programs yourself through Edgeconomy or do you help people set up those micro-credential courses? What, what is it that Edgeconomy does and, and how are you involved? Yeah. So the, a lot of the work that we're doing is supporting organisations to find, um, to find the meaning and the use case uh, and the opportunity for micro-credentials and, and digital badging in their organisation. But also looking into the future um, and, and the technology that's currently uh, in place and the platforms that are being used. Uh, we try to get the most of the systems and the processes that are in place, but also to adopt new technology where it's required. 
and to optimize and get the most out of that, so that whole um, ed tech adoption and optimization uh, and bringing it all in together. So working with organizations to take a look at what training they offer and what they do really well, uh, being able to just focus on that and, and break that down into micro credentials or short form credentials that can be offered to and, their and existing And so you're clients. not necessarily stuck with something in Australia, are you? You could actually capture the world and, and different parts yeah, of the world absolutely. and what the world does well. Yeah, very much in, in, in that way. There's a lot of short courses and non-accredited training that is being delivered here online in Australia that may have come across from Europe or America. And likewise, is a great opportunity uh, for Australian organisations that have built out really good niche training products uh, to be able to take those out to the world and compete in the uh, global market for online learning, which is widely non-accredited. And, and so if people are delivering these micro credentials, Matthew, are they able, sorry, are the students then able to use those for RPL or credit transfer down the track? Yeah, so very much in the same way that a training organisation can offer a full qualification, they can offer a program unit by unit, or, or they can offer it as small chunks of learning that may count towards a unit at some point in time. With micro-credentials, you, you can be offering accredited training, you can be offering non-accredited training. It really, what, what's important from a compliance perspective is that you've really documented where the learning is taking place, where the learning is taking place for nationally recognized training, but also if there is assessment along the way, exactly what's happening at what point in time and really where the entry and exit points are. It should be documented yeah, on the training and assessment. And what students need to be able to enter into the program and what they're going to get when they get out. Very much the same pre-enrollment sort of information that we need to be giving students when they're doing nationally recognized training as well. So right, I, yeah, I guess absolutely. I'm wondering then, and courses like those ones that we see on LinkedIn, would they, you know how you have LinkedIn learning courses, would they be micro-credentials? Yeah, yeah they awesome. certainly lend themselves towards that approach of, yeah, so that would be like a Coursera type platform or a Future Learn or Udacity or edX, so these short, um, short programs. So it may be a series of... Uh, five weeks of weekly webinars and, and, and wrapped around that might be some online learning content that you can work your way through, maybe work towards uh, some sort of project that you're gonna implement over that five or six week period. So often, I mean, like that would have historically been referred to as what, like a masterclass or you might've gone and- Yeah, a, I'm actually just thinking program. that, I, I'm just thinking, I recently did a, um, a course at the London School of Economics and Political Science right here in Perth, in, in my office. Oh, wow. And um, it, it was over eight weeks and it was done through a, an LMS called Get Smarter and it was done with the professors from the um, law school and, and regulation department there. And we had assessments and webinars each week and we had group discussions and we had little little activities that we had to do along the way and we we ended up getting this nice little certificate unfortunately it's on my wall in another room um but i'm guessing that's what a micro credential is right yeah that that, that i like right now if there was an element if that was at the least blended or if that was offered entirely online i i guess i think in my in my rule book i think that could would probably be referred to as a micro credential yeah. it's up and hosted suitable learning platform. It's still like used wide and far throughout higher education. A lot of universities have been offering these programs, masterclasses, or um, might have been like a, a, a module for a master's unit or some sort of postgrad unit. I mean, you've been able to do that for years. It, I think just putting it online and it is really the name that you call it, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So if someone wanted to get started with this sort of concept to get all of their eggs out of that basket, how, how would you sure. recommend that they do it? What would you suggest that they do? Get in touch with you? Yeah, it's, not a case of, it's not, I think like putting any learning online, it's not a case of build it and they will come. Um, for, I think first of all, before you start shopping around for learning management systems and 
getting out the video camera and filming your learning content and pulling it all together, it's really important to um, make sure that what you're putting up online is going to be fit for purpose and that there is an audience for, for what you're wanting to develop and that there's you know, someone at the end that's happy to pay for that training and, and undertake it. But once that's established, yeah, getting the, the skills of building online learning content. So do you have a learning management system? How do you go about your instructional design? Uh, who's developing the content? Are you working with SCORM or are you going to be working with a green screen or, or filming a lot of your own content? And really just building the skills up around you or learning how to use each of those platforms and online tools yourself. That's often what really holds organizations so back is I guess lack of instructional designers out there. It is a very difficult role to recruit. Yeah. And, and is it that um, the courses would always be live or would they often be pre-recorded and sort of have offline activities and discussion groups inside the courses or? Yeah, so I don't think there's any hard and fast rules on that. Uh, some will be completely pre-recorded and, and, and self-paced. Others might require you to turn up for a live webinar or it may be a, a drip-fed type program where it is all pre-recorded but it drops periodically each week or you might get new content dropping in each day. It, it really does depend. I yeah. mean, there's no, like I said, there's no hard and fast rules on it. It really more comes down to user experience and um, how, how well it's all been designed from a UX perspective. So that's a really helpful little tip there, Matthew, is that it, it's not, there's no real hard and fast rules. So that means it's not something that ASCOA can come and regulate. <laughs> yeah, right. Or they can. <laughs> I think being able to demonstrate, <laughs> being able, always being able to demonstrate or being able to map back to where the learning took place and certainly where the assessment is taking place and meeting the training package requirements is a good idea. Um, <laughs> and the rule of thumb is always there, right? If you don't have it mapped, yeah, there's no absolutely. rules that you have to have it mapped, but if it's not mapped, you need to be able to demonstrate exactly where everything uh, where everything is. And, and that's if it's nationally recognised training, of course. But if it's non-accredited right. yeah. training, then it's outside ASQA territory. But if you're running an RTO and you're also delivering that, it's important to be able to differentiate between the accredited and non-accredited training. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the market will hold you so, to account as well. You really want to make sure the quality of what you're putting out there is at the same level of quality that you'd put nationally recognised training out anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have any other suggestions or tips that you'd like to share with us briefly in relation to micro-credentials or if people want to get in touch with you and Educonomy? Um, what should yeah, they the do? The only thing I'd just say, we've got, a, um, we, we've got a free event coming up in a few weeks' time. If you are interested, we've, um, I, I've got a number of clients and colleagues that have, um, we've worked with to implement micro-credential frameworks so that these colleges or, or TAFE institutes can, can offer micro-credentials, but also from a few platforms uh, that um, operate in that space as well. So it's on the uh, 26th of August, I believe. Um, but look, I'll, I'll give you the link to share through the platform and yeah, that if you're interested in in touch, look us up online. That sounds great, Matthew. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and, and telling us all about sure. micro credentials and short courses on a, a Friday night when you could be out with your alpacas. Gorgeous little things yeah. they are. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. Well, and um, go on. Yeah, looking forward to being able to just catch up once all this is uh, all over. I'm sure we'll see you in Perth at some point. Oh, ab absolutely. Absolutely. It's been a long time since you and I have been able to catch up uh, in real life. <laughs> and it'd be lovely yeah. to catch up for a glass of wine or something again. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Thank you have so much night. for your time tonight, Matthew. And I'll definitely share all of that information once you send it through to us. Thank you very Cheers. much. Bye for now.